Hi. <laughs> um, my name is Rachel. I'm a designer here at Catalyst. Um, about me. Before I started working at Catalyst, I was working in libraries for nearly 12 years. Um, I did your kind of typical library jobs. I did put books away on the shelf. I did general library inquiries, but I actually ended up um, delivering digital services um, and doing um, a bit of web design, social media, marketing, event planning, kind of a bit of everything. Um, and during that time, I also studied design at Massey, uh, which took four years. And um, then while I was working at the library, I did some freelance design and sort of ended up combining my library work with the design. Um, and yeah, and now I'm full-time at Catalyst and I don't work at the library anymore, which is a big change. <laughs> um, other non-work-related things about me. Um, um, I collect houseplants. I have an arthritic 14-year-old cat named Socks. Um, and I love yellow, uh, mustard yellow. Um, if you ask a designer what their favourite colour is, um, they'll give you the Pantone value, the hex value, the RGB value and the CMYK value. Uh, in fact, one time at one of our design meetings as an icebreaker, we went round saying, what's your favourite colour? And the answers were cerulean, deep forest green, pale pink but with a hint of coral but not quite salmon, and PMS 1805, <laughs> which is the catalyst red, by the way. Um, oh, how did that get in there? Um, so, talk stuff. Uh, I'm going to talk about design for non-designers. Um, so kind of, I'm trying to cover relatively straightforward things that you can sort of implement relatively, relatively easily. Um, and what I'm covering is by no means comprehensive. It's, um, hopefully will give you sort of a solid set of guidelines you can sort of refer to. Guidelines, not rules, to be very clear. Um, and there's just things that you can refer to when things don't look quite right. Um, and good design comes from practice. So lots and lots of practice. Um, you don't have to get it right first time. I definitely don't. In fact, I spend a lot of time moving things one pixel up and one pixel down and one pixel left and one pixel up again and so on. Um, you probably heard the phrase rules are made to be broken. Uh, design leans on that pretty heavily but at the same time it doesn't, and at the same time there's no rules, and it's anarchy. Um, but that's maybe not very helpful, but you should just treat any design rules as suggestions. Um, it's like I before E, except after C. Um, but then you get neighbor, um, and ear, and protein, and ancient, and seas, and weird, and everything is not following the rules anymore. Um, none of them follow the rules, but we still know what they mean, and that's the important thing. Um, and sometimes I feel like this when I'm talking about design. I'm like, do you see what I'm seeing? Um, yeah. <laughs> huh? Pepe Sylvia. I don't know. Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> um, also, I really love memes. Just an FYI. Um, there's this thing called the 80 20 rule or the Pareto principle, uh, which refers to how 80% uh, of a result um, comes from 20% of the causes. Um, and some common, common examples of this, 80% uh, of work productivity coming from 20% of time you put in, 80% um, of errors coming from 20% of code, 80% um, of attention spent on 20% of the web page. Um, and I sort of applied this in a way that design is 80% thinking and 20% doing. Um, and I guess if you flip that and think about the context from uh, as these examples, um, and from the perspective of the end user, it's 80% of understanding comes from 20% of the overall process. Um, design's not just for decoration. Um, the purpose of design is 
to present information in the most logical, convenient way. Um, and this requires planning. Um, maybe this isn't the perfect oh, analogy, but um, you know, it's a guideline, not a rule. Um, first is text and typography. Uh, when in doubt, align left. In fact, always align left, generally. Um, left alignment is easier to read um, because your eye is always coming back uh, to the same point on the page. So um, you finish line and you're always jumping back to the same spot. Um, if you were to center a line, uh, maybe don't do that. Um, but you can see how the beginning of the next line is difficult to find. You sort of, your eye has to jump forward and back quite a lot. Um, it just makes it really frustrating. Um, and yeah, ends up being really frustrated, frustrating for your user or your reader. Um, consider the length of your text, of the lines, line length of text blocks. Uh, when your lines are too long, you just get tired reading them. Um, and especially if that's combined with text that's too small, uh, the reader gets just tired before you even get to the end of the line. Um, uh, when, when reaching the end of the line and jumping back to um, the start is kind of like a micro pause and it just helps you um, keep reading and have the stamina to keep reading. Um, and the optimal line length is like, I don't know, like this long or whatever. It really doesn't matter, it's just <laughs> a guideline. Um, but just test things. Um, yeah, you kind of try one this too long, too short. It'll be somewhere in the middle, Goldilocks style. Um, test things. Um, yeah, for line length, just read it yourself. And if you find yourself getting tired by the time you get to the end of that line, chances are someone else will as well. So, um, yeah, don't assume anything. Test it because, as my dad liked to say to me, um, what happens when you assume? You make an ass out of you and me. I don't know why he said that to me so often. Um, vaguely concerning. Um, for regular text, um, not headings, uh, 14 to 16 pixels on the web is a generally good accepted size, very readable. Um, for printed, um, printed word, 10, 11 point is a good text size. Um, again, guideline, not a rule. <laughs> um, Headings, you want to be big enough that they um, are readable and um, distinctive as headings, um, but they don't need to really shout. Um, you want your heading to be able to fit on a line. You don't want it to um, be taking up too much proportional space with um, on your page. Um, and also don't use too many text sizes on the same page. Uh, on the same page, you should be able to visually recognize when your text uh, is a different size. Um, if you look at a page and you're sort of thinking, is that the same size as that? And you're kind of like, do I need to get out a ruler to see if that is the same size as that? You should probably just make one of them bigger or one of them smaller. They shouldn't be too similar. Um, just gets confusing. Um, it can be things like that that end up being super annoying um, and distracting and can take away impact from the entire thing that you're trying to do. Um, so don't want that. Um, yeah, I have quite a lot of pointers about typography because um, it can be really easy to go wrong. Um, uh, it's really easy to be distracted by just the sheer number of options um, that you have too. Um, and it's also so prevalent because um, Apparently 95% of what's on the web is text-based. Uh, considering the number of memes that I consume, I find this hard to believe, but that's fine. Um, uh, but the internet told me it was true, and you should definitely believe everything you read on the internet. Just FYI. Um, but yeah, just keep it simple. Um, simple is better than... Overcomplicated. Um, 
if you if it's overcomplicated, you just can't even comprehend anything. Um, so graphic design is my passion. I love it. Um, anyway, um, I feel like I have completely raced through this, but that's fine. I'm just going to keep going. Um, I'm just going to go over a couple of other things that are sort of resources as well that might be helpful. Um, with fonts, we've got Google Fonts. It's amazing. Um, Google Fonts has like hundreds of different fonts um, that you can download or use as web fonts. Um, they're all free and you can just pretty much go wild. Um, uh, and sorry. Um, you can actually filter these um, when you're searching uh, by, you've got serif, sans serif, which I'll go into in a sec. Um, but you've also got display, so heading fonts, uh, handwriting style. And you can, just over on the right there, you've got your little filters. So you can find quite easily the thing you're looking for. So much choice. It's pretty awesome, but also um, can be difficult. So. Um, it, you can sort by most popular, and often they are popular for a reason. They're very readable. Um, yeah, it's like that for a reason. <laughs> um, think about the appropriateness of the font. Um, oh, so we'll, um, yeah, think about the appropriate, appropriateness of the font that you um, choose for the um, intent and for its intended purpose. Um, different font features can convey different um, feelings and moods and connotations. Um, serif fonts, which is the top left, um, often feel quite serious um, and, and maybe a sense of history. Um, sans serif on the top right can feel more contemporary. Um, Round, rounded fonts on the bottom left, which is definitely not a technical term, but you know, um, can feel more friendly and um, comfortable. And squared off fonts like the bottom right uh, can feel more like techy or futuristic. And you just want to use something that feels appropriate for the intended use. Um, sometimes you don't notice these connotations. Um, until someone points them out to you, it happens to me all the time. <laughs> you get better at it. Um, but try, like, not to do, like, this is fine. This is not fine. <laughs> um, white space is criminally underused. <laughs> um, you don't have to use every scrap of space that you have. Um, in fact, white space can really make the design that you are creating much stronger because it gives your design room to breathe. You can sort of give your eyes a rest. Um, it just, white space. White space is empty space. You just don't need to put everything everywhere, <laughs> basically. Um, but it, yeah, it, it really makes a difference I uh, should really put an example in here, but didn't do that. Um, but it just really helps if you just um, leave some space um, in what you're doing, and it will can really make what you're doing a lot stronger. Color. Um, color is really difficult, and I know a lot of designers struggle with color, so... Um, don't worry, um, it's totally okay to find it hard. Um, creating a color palette um, can be really difficult. In fact, can be one of the most time consuming things that you end up doing. Um, but I like to take inspiration from photos or other um, images that I find um, inspiring or pleasing. Um, and then I transfer those into color palettes. Um, and this can be really good because you kind of know what you like visually and you're like, well, I want to emulate some of that. How do I do that? Color is a really good way to do that. Um, so this could be from movie stills, um, posters, photographs, buildings, or murals, or anything, really. Um, yeah, so I'll pick out some colors, um, make adjustments. Um, and yeah, and then it's usually you might want to add a color, take a color out or something. But 
here's some examples. There was just this image that I really liked on the left here. Um, so I just pulled out the four colours that were used in it and that would be a really nice, really nice, really basic colour palette. Um, and then this is a still from one of my favourite movies and I really liked the colours in that. So I just pulled those out again to the side and I might tweak that top orange to maybe be a little bit brighter or something, but other than that, um, it's pretty much good to go. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, that can be a really valuable way to start, have a starting point with colour, because um, it can be really tricky. Um, like I said, just colour uh, can be really difficult, so trying to feel overwhelmed. Um, Adobe has this really cool website, um, which, side note, used to be called Cooler, which I thought was really cool, uh, but they have now changed it to Adobe Color CC, which is extremely boring, but that's fine. Um, uh, and so on Adobe Color CC, um, there are all these color palettes that have been made up and um, just uploaded and you can um, browse, you can actually search colors. You might even search mustard yellow, possibly. I was saying that you can search for a keyword on Adobe Colors and it will show you pal color palettes including that color um, which is really great if you have an idea of where you want to start and then see what colors might go with that color. Um, um, I'd hoped that you might be able to search by hex value because I'm sure you used to be able to do that but you can't now unfortunately. But um, a really cool thing you can do if you're using Adobe products, sorry, I know this is open source, but sorry. Um, <laughs> um, you can actually directly download the ASC um, color palette files and from, from this website and import them into your Adobe um, files. So you can have that color, pa color palette preset and just import it, which is super great. Um, yeah if you happen to be using Adobe products. Sorry. Um, I found this other site called LOL Colors, which I liked, and also incidentally uses white space really well. Um, this is pretty much the whole site. Um, when you scroll down, there's a few more of these little teardrop color palettes. Um, and when you hover over them, it shows you the hex value of the colors. Um, this is really cool, but unfortunately it's a bit limited. At the moment, they seem to be doing some kind of maintenance or something, so still quite nice there. Um, images can really enhance um, your work. There's a lot of really nice free images available. Um, can really help to illustrate a message um, or really emphasize a point. Um, my personal favorite is Unsplash. Um, they have a lot of really lovely uh, photography that is free. You don't have to attribute it or anything. It's just, you can just download it. And it's stock photos that don't look really like stock photos. Um, oh, interesting. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, well, I'll take that with a grain of salt. Pardon me? Yes, yeah, 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 so you can just take them and do whatever you want with them. They are just free and, yeah, no attribution um, needed or anything like that. You can just download them. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, um, there's a lot of... Yeah, exactly. If you're looking for really specific things, that can be really good. Um, there's also um, some other things which, um, like, for example, the... I think it's the Library of Congress and some other really cool institutions have really amazing sort of historical and botanical and um, beautiful illustrations and photographs online that you can, that are, um, yeah, free Creative Commons and you can just download and do what you want with those as well. Um, those are really awesome. Um, if I don't know what happens with these talks afterwards, but I could maybe include um, some links to some more places like that as well. Like Pixabay. Pixabay. Awesome. Yeah, there's quite a few um, floating around at the moment. Um, 
but yeah, generally the quality of the photos is really nice and um, yeah, you get quite a, they, they can be quite um, emotive, um, which is great. Um, yeah, so that's kind of um, most of what I wanted to cover at the moment. And I feel like I just raced through that, but um, if anyone has any questions, oh, hello, go ahead. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Grant, <laughs> um, there are some really nice, um, I really like Open Sands, uh, uh, <laughs> Open Sands is nice, uh, Museo, Montserrat, I think those are all Google fonts, um, yeah, I think, and they're all sans serif ones, um, I generally like a sans serif font on a CV, um, I think it looks clean and professional and uh, you can always do your headings in a different font. I usually like to pair, um, if you do maybe a set, sorry this is a total tangent, but if you use um, a sans serif in the body text um, to use a serif font for your headings can be a really nice contrast. Um, you And if you're using two fonts together you kind of don't want to use two that are too similar or look too visually similar, it just gets really confusing. Same with, it's just like the text sizes, if it's too close, it makes you think there's something wrong. Um, contrast. contrast is key. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to cover today, um, but there's probably a few things. Oh, um, I'm just gonna finish up, but then I have more questions. I can take totally whatever questions. Um, that would be awesome. Um, but I just wanted to emphasize that there's a lot of practice involved. Um, and so th and there's no completely right way to do this either. Um, and when I was planning this talk, I was thinking about having like super vanilla slides that have technically really correct design and um, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, but design's about having fun. Um, and I like pink, and I like gradients, and I like cute fonts, so I did that. <laughs> um, so yeah, just do things because you like it as well. I think that's really important. Um, and also I think I broke at least half the guidelines that I told you about um, just in making this presentation. So yeah, rules are made to be broken, maybe. Exactly, yeah. There's just a million exceptions and then the exceptions are kind of everything that you do. Yeah. Um, Christina had a question? Yes. Uh, what's the difference between seven and sansa? I'm just going to jump back. Uh, so um, serif fonts have the little um, tails on the end here. Um, traditionally they're used in print. Um, and they're sort of um, these little, tiny little tail bits uh, kind of go back to when um, typefaces were physical things uh, and the little tails would help catch more ink and make things more readable. Hello. Yeah. Eh, yeah. Yeah. Ah, right. Yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Tell them about the squint test. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about the squint test. Squint test is if you, like, and good one for... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I, I went to school with Rachel. Um, the, the squint test is, is a good one for white space and for contrast, is to, to look at what you're designing, squint a bit. And if everything still has its own shape and is distinct from each other, it's a good kind of test to see whether there's enough contrast. Yeah. So like box of text in the middle yeah. of the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also known as a table glasses of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a good one. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, and then Excuse me, the um, sans serif is, just doesn't have the little um, little tails and generally sans serif uh, 
used a lot more online. Um, with the serif fonts too, they're actually easier to read and print. Um, the way that, you, you know, when you're reading, you sort of read the shape of words rather than reading each individual letter. Um, and serif fonts can really help with that. Most, most books are printed in serif fonts. Um, you, in that instance, you'd pr you really kind of want your colours to have distinctive purposes. Um, if you are introducing too many colours, you then have to remember what those colours mean um, and what they might indicate. And so by limiting that, four or five is usually quite good. Um, you can do two. <laughs> Um, but yeah, four or five is quite good if you want to have the level of contrast and um, say you want to highlight a, a notification or a, you know, you've got colours to work with, um, but it's not too many that you have to really rack your brain to remember what each colour indicates. So um, when it starts to get confusing, again, like I say, test everything. And if you kind of go, what does that mean again? it's probably too much. Um, it's kind of feeling things out a lot of the time. Yeah. Any more questions? Not necessarily. Um, Usually it's just I like know what colours I like to see together or like I'll just know what my taste is, I suppose, or what my interests are. And it absolutely doesn't have to be related to um, what you're using it for at all. Um, I'm just going to jump back to my... Um, that one. Like, this is just... Um, this is an awesome illustration I found online and um, just pick those colours out. I could very happily use that for, um, what am I doing? What am I coming up next? Um, my mind's gone blank. What I'm, I'm trying to think of what I'm doing next. But, um, but that would very happily sit together as a colour family for um, a Toothpaste? Yeah, why not? Um, you could, th yeah, they, they sit together quite well. The contrast, there's quite a lot of contrast. You've got the black and the white and the red and the blue contrast each other quite nicely. Um, you've got some that are receding, uh, like the blue because it's a cooler shade recedes, the red because it's warmer um, comes forward. Um, but yeah, you just use it for anything really just kind of getting the combination of colours. Again, I guess it is, is similar to um, picking the right font in that you want to um, evoke something with that. You don't always have to, but if it's bringing to mind something else that you don't want it to, then maybe consider changing it, and that works um, for fonts and for colours, I suppose. I see. Um, there is a lot of testing you need to do uh, in terms of, because when you look at colours on a screen, it's made up of light. Um, I didn't go into any of the technical, um, that kind of stuff today, but um, yeah, when you're looking at um, colours from a screen, it's made up of light, and when you, um, and uh, on a screen, when all of your colours combine, it creates white. And when you're printing, um, 
all your colors combined creates black. Um, it's it's a very different sort of dynamic, and um, there's all kinds of things. It could be paper stock. It could be the kind of printer. It could be all these kind of things. Um, I generally do quite a lot of tests, um, printing things out, and even like holding my paper up to the screen and being like, how similar does that look? Um, sometimes you might even have to have two versions. You can have the version of, like, just say you were wanting to actually match it. Um, you might have your version of your file, which um, is how you want it to look on screen, but when you print it, it looks completely wrong. So you have another version of that, um, which actually you might have to completely change the colour uh, to get the printout looking like how you actually want it to look. Um, again, lots of testing. <laughs>